Hey there, it's us again, you and Sebastian, bringing you a dungeon guide for the Tower of Babel, the level 83 and second dungeon encountered in the Endwalker expansion. Let's get right into it. This dungeon starts off with a small group of 5 slashers. Once killed, 5 extra adds spawn. They go down rather quickly. A little bit further, you can pull a big group of 9 together. With proper usage of cooldowns, they should not pose a threat. Barnabas, the first boss of this dungeon, is but a few steps further. He will start a fight with Grunt and Pound, facing an untargetable NPC to his left. Take note that the boss charges his arm way ahead of time before the AoE indicator appears, so do move away if he's facing you with his arm raised later in the fight. Shortly after, the arena will close off and the outer edge will become an electric field. Going into the field gives you a soft hitting dot, yet better to avoid it altogether. Boss will then face a random player for ground and pound. Again, do move out of the way when he starts facing you with his arm raised. Next up, he will run to the north of the arena and prepare to use dynamic pound. While this happens, everyone will be targeted by a plus or minus symbol. Look at your own symbol and the symbol showing in the middle of the AoE to determine if you'll be pulled or pushed away. Remember, opposites attract and by extension, everything else repels. After being rudely shoved around, a simple stack marker appears. Even more magnetic fun, this time tethered to the boss we will be doing a circle AoE. His plus or minus sign will be spinning around him. Be sure to be next to the middle AoE or at the edge of the arena to avoid damage as the pull or shove does go pretty far. The next mechanic is called Thunder Call, which will spawn 4 orbs around the field. These orbs will create a big AoE after a short duration. This is combined with a boss doing a rolling scrap line. The boss will then continue to repeat already seen mechanics. Once done with the boss, you find yourself on an elevator that spawns multiple sets of ads back to back. First 4 ads, 3 more, followed by 2 big ones. A loading screen and a short walk before you find another small group of 3. When entering the second boss's arena, do take notice of the two marked fields. On the left, a green field with a human and a frog depicted upon it. On the right, a purple one with a human and a human shrinking, which will be used for later mechanics. Lugai's first cast will be Thermal Suppression, a moderate hitting AoE, followed up by Magitek missiles, targeting two people for dodgeable circle AoEs. And then a Magitek Ray, a line AoE which also can be easily dodged. He'll walk to the middle and cast Magitek Chakram. After his cast, the two previously mentioned fields will light up. Shortly after, the chakrams will spawn and cover the entire field with line AoEs. Go stand on the purple shrink platform to get super small so the chakrams can't hit you. Before you try, yes, I did become a frog to try and jump over it. The answer is sadly a no. Which almost got me killed because of the thermal suppression after. Magitek Explosive spawns 3 mines that will explode in a plus sign. Take notice of where they land to determine your safe spots. The boss will then cast Downpour, which gives you a slowed and breathless debuff. Step into the green frog field to turn into a frog to lose both debuffs. Failing to do so will add breathless stacks over time. Reaching the 8th stack will immediately kill you. Everything after this point is again a repeat of mechanics. After yet another elevator ride, the third set of ads are upon you. A big group of 7 ads can be pulled together, followed by a group of 6 with 2 hypertunes. Be prepared to use proper cooldowns for both these groups. And then we arrive at our third and final boss for this dungeon. Anima will start a fight with Lunar Nail which spawns multiple nails that will tether to each other. 
The Tetherdoor zones eventually create a square AoE and damage anyone inside of it. Find and locate the corner or corners without a nail to find your safe spot. Mega Graviton will do a moderate amount of damage and spawn 4 Void Balls. Every party member will get tethered to a ball with a damage reduction tether. A damage reduction tether is a purple tether with arrows pointing away from the center of it. All you have to do is put enough distance between you and the ball to turn the purple tether into orange. Next up, Anima will cast Bantless Pain and tether to multiple targets outside of the arena. Once done casting, you'll be pulled to the middle for a series of explosions to start going off. Simply run out of the middle to a corner and you'll be safe for the expanding AoE. You'll be pulled into an alternate dimension. Here, Anima will summon Ford Klaus on one side of the arena, followed by another set of Klaus on the opposite side. These Klaus will rush over the field back to back. Be sure to dodge both of sets in the order they were spawned. Obliviating Klaus will target two people for a follow AoE marker. Simply go stand in one corner, and once the first AoE marker appears, run to an adjacent corner to dodge this ability. Do take care to not get hit by the other person's AoEs though. Once the boss's HP reaches zero, he will spam some small AoEs and then one heavy hitting AoE before being sent back to our dimension. At this point, you have to kill the boss a second time, but there will be no more new mechanics. I again hope this guide was informative enough for helping you clear this content. Don't forget to pet your guide to you and Sebastian. Have a wonderful day, enjoy your Final Fantasy XIV experience and until next time, bye!